Hey folks, it's time for yet another custom lesson. This one has been requested by Sridharam Guha Prasad. Might I request a custom lesson here? Of course. If yes, custom lesson requests. Weapons, primary will be the sword, I suck at this one the most. Secondary will be Switchglaive, I suck at this one a little less than the sword. Guardian spirits, a phantom and brood of your choosing, Soul Cores, Nupepo, Oboro Guruma, Karasatengu, Daidra Bochi, Flying Bolt, and Nue. Any manner you find feasible. Enemies will be Minamoto Maniacs. I could not also fight Ren and Toshimitsu, it just would have been a bit much. But let's just show you what I'm working with weapon wise. Demon Horde Katana, it's not optimized, but I like the fact that they have Anima Bonus on Grapple, Life Chain Active Skill, and Corruption. It's pretty much the same theme on my Switch Glaive as well. Feel free to substitute them with whatever you'd like. Now, when it came to the Soul Course and Guardian Spirits, I actually had to be fairly specific with how I worked about it because there was a lot of attunements that I needed in order to make these work. So the first Phantom Spirit I decided to go with was Kagewani. Now the main reason for this was a combination of the relatively high attunements as well as the Life Chain Yokai ability hit, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Having life back from any Soul Core you use basically is super good. Now I put the Soul Cores as you can see here, Karasatengu, which I think is greatly underappreciated. Uh, Nui, which is of course very difficult to use because hitbox issues, but I find that in certain circumstances, and they are admittedly kind of few, uh, it can be pretty handy to get quick lightning applications and hit a whole host of things around you. And getting life chain off of that is certainly pretty nice. When you can try to get this soul core as high as you can for the lightning based damage and the shock accumulation, it's not necessary, but it's nice to have. I kind of lucked out with this anima bonus, but again, Pretty much every anima bonus I get can always just be replaced by things like Archiokai Talismans. So you don't really have to worry too much about it. It's just so I am less dependent on any specific jutsu. Next we have Flying Bolt here and it was part of a theme as well on this uh, Guardian Spirit in that I could shock a target and slow them down. Uh, Nui is not going to be valuable against Yoshitsune, but against Yorimitsu it's actually kind of nice. Same with Flying Bolt. It, it works on both of them, but Yoshitsune is just... I. I find that anything that has some projectile stuff just doesn't feel as good against you should say, but that's just my own personal thing. Feel free to rank this one up. The anima bonus range weapon hit isn't the most necessary, I didn't bother going with it, but you can. However, the reduced movement range weapon hit is very nice, so I mean, sure, I'll take the bonus with this if I have to rank this up, but truth be told, all I really cared about was Yokai ability keep pulse. Everything else is extra. As, for me, the most important stat that I want, aside from Yokai ability key pulse, is the life drain which I have here. Now, given the steep requirements of the attunement costs, I decided to go with Baku once again. Baku has very high attunement and is a brute. I was thinking of other brutes with 22 anima, uh, sorry, attunement, but fact of the matter is the soul cores that we have left, I figure would be best performed on Baku anyway. Now, we do have Nupepo. We do have Oboroguruma and Daidara. Uh, I think other options I was thinking of might have included Hyobishin. There may have been another one, and honestly, you can pick whatever you want. What I really, really, really wanted to go with, however, was Atlas Bear, but I have 20 attunement. And I think I needed 46 attunement total in order to make my setup work. And just the way that the attunement cost for the individual soul callers worked, I just decided, hey, I'll just go with Baku. Um, the reason I wanted to go with Atlas Bear was because Nupepo and Damage Bonus low-key work really, really well. But yeah, it just wasn't in the cards this time, unless you are fortunate to get a bunch of Soul Cores with a 2 limit minus 1. If you are able to get that, then great, but I am lazy, so I'm not going to go for that. But yeah, there is no right or wrong answer to this one, but I figured, hey, if I'm using corrupted base weapons and I'm going to corrupt targets with um, Oboro Guruma, then what I might as well do is stack a whole ton of damage, which Nupepo will give me access to. Nupepo is one of those soul cores I rarely use, simply because I don't like the fact that it increases my damage at the expense of key. That's like kind of the opposite of how I play. I'm, I'm the weird guy who's like, well, you could either do one attack and kill a target, or you can do a million attacks and tickle the target. I'm like, I'll, I'll tickle the target to death. That's good to me. So that's why I generally don't use Nupepo, but if since you are going to be using it, I would strongly recommend boosting these stats up. These are pretty good, especially if you use things like Extraction Talismans. Uh, definitely pretty handy, but all I really cared about was the okay ability to keep pulse. Uh, with Oboro Guruma, I didn't bother ranking it up. And then Daidra Bochi, uh, you can if you want. Having extra life, there's no real downside to that. 
So yeah, overall, this is my setup, and let's get on to Yokai Shift, which is going to be a real powerhouse. So let's get into Yokai Shift. Here we go. So this is going to feel a little awkward with things like Raven Tengu. But I'll still try to show you some interesting things I may like to do. Basically jump upside with the shark it can be kind of neat. Yeah, just like an example there. Uh, when it comes to using Nue, Nue is going to be a little difficult. I generally will use it when I've created a little distance with uh, the Phantom Shift. So that can sometimes involve... Uh, let's see, let's see if I can get a good position for you. So, Kagewani, push him back, attack, attack, attack. Let's try Nue now. Missed, right? Feels pretty bad. So how much closer do I got to get? Just a wee bit closer. Oh, come on. What is this? <laughs> I was trying to get the grapple off. Alright, so let me show you. I generally would recommend doing it after a grapple. Don't want to be too far for Nui. It's it's just, it's kind of annoying to hit. You kind of have to almost learn the hitbox. Alright. I would probably try to do it now after the grapple. Good work. Yeah, it'll work. It's not, again, the best, which is why Kagewani can feel awkward. But it's pretty handy to use, and when you can shock targets, it can be pretty rad. Whee, Tengu! Alright, so let's try one more time. Got the grapple. Oh, it's dead. Well, let's just pretend it survived, and then I would use Nui. Uh, things are going to be very different and significantly easier when you decide to use Baku. However, there is the exception of Nupepo. Now, when you're using this, you basically have to prepare to almost, I would say, run out of Yokai Shift really easily because New Pepo is really gonna drain it, drain your Yokai Shift gauge. So you'll do a lot of damage. So maybe you might want to use this towards the end of Yokai Shift, but it's a trade off for just consuming so much of your gauge. Uh, you won't really notice it uh, in the dojo, but you will in combat. So you'll watch, like, it, it can be ridiculous. You get 50% extra damage, but you'll run out of Yokai ships, so basically plan to use it towards the end. That's my general advice. But other than that, here you can see some combos, and then here, look, this thing's just gonna die. So yeah, it's a big finisher type thing. You can combo alongside it, but again, it's just, you're gonna, you're gonna run out of gauge. So when you get confusion off, then you probably want to use new Pepo. And then go for a crazy chicken bone or something like that. That's my general advice. This will feel a little weird to use. And hopefully you got some ideas and cool little combos you can have in play. And yeah, I think it's one of those things that you just kind of have to get used to using. And that just comes with practice. But let's just now get on to the weapon based play. All right, so weapon-based play is now the name of the game, and I understand that you feel a little weaker in it, so let's just show you some things you can do that'll make gameplay feel a little spiffy. Heart's always nice to use. Come on, get up. Very nice, right? Cool. If the target had more health, that Azuna drop would have been much more impactful. So what you can use Nupepo for is right before you get an Azuna drop, is just go for it. Or hell, just even a super punish final blow. If you're using Corruption, it's really not too bad then. But you'll really have to focus on maintaining that key recovery, and that can be very difficult. So don't just willy-nilly use Nupepo for damage. Plan the damage, and then it's going to feel great. Because right now I'm having 50% increased key uh, damage, or key consumption. So you can uh, kind of want to mitigate that. Oh, nice Nue. Here's a way that I like to use Nue with this setup against human opponents, which I will be fighting Raiko a bit later. 
So I know, of course, using new Pepo, uh, sorry, using new A against humans can be pretty difficult, and trying to find that sweet spot for damage can be hard. So I usually like to use. I usually like to use Swallow's Wing right after Nizuno Drop just so I can get the right positioning. Ah, and then Raven Tengu is always fun to avoid all sorts of attacks. It's four anima, jump up, stay out of harm's way for a while. And even if you don't get the damage, which is always nice, you just basically avoid all sorts of things. So yeah, just some ideas on how to use some of these things a bit more effectively which I understand can be very challenging to do. Sweet. Use your soul cores very frequently so you can keep your key recovery up. That is essential. And then try not to block at all and try to just avoid everything because you do not want to lose all your key. It can feel pretty bad. All right, let's show you some other things that we can do. Just to give you an idea of how to mess around with this. Very nice. Pretty sweet, huh? So yeah, you have a lot of damage potential, but let's keep things going using more soul cores, give you more ideas. Man, I use so much key, it's pretty crazy. Of course, one thing you can do is if targets usually will get up after that, you can just sequence it into a Raven Tango to get another final blow. So chaining final blows can feel pretty rad, especially against human targets. All right, what else can we do? Ah! I like to use Raven Tango to just avoid all sorts of stuff, even if targets dodge it. What else we got? Pretty sweet. All right, let's do a couple more things and then I suppose we'll call it. I'll try to do some more out of key combo play against humans and then we'll get onto the gameplay showcase. Really dog. Oh god, I'm running out of key. This would be a bad moment to use Nupepo. Come on, what you got? Dude, this human enemy is ruining me. Stop! Nope, I'm out of here. Very nice. Okay, I, I need to redeem myself. One more thing with Switchclave. Okay, what else we got? What you got, boy? Dude, how are you dodging everything? Stop. There you go, you're dead. Okay, I sucked. Let's get on to the Minamoto Maniacs. I will see you guys in a bit. All right, let's fight the Minamoto Maniacs, I guess. So let's start with Yoshitsune and let's see how things go with this setup. So as a reminder, I'm not gonna really be able to depend upon any elements except corruption at my disposal, that's it. So lightning from Nue won't hit, stuff like that which can be understandably a little frustrating. Fortunately, things like Oboro Guruma will work very well here, as Corruption works really well, and so does Purity against Yoshitsune. All right, let's keep things going. I do use my yokai abilities. I'm not too concerned about like taking damage or anything right now, because this version of Yoshitsune is on the weaker end. Just usually the first boss and any double boss scroll tends to just be on the weaker side in HP and damage dealt. Like, let's see, can I get the Yatsumira stuff off? Yeah, like, it's pretty cool. So if you didn't know, Yatsumira can actually reflect his swords right back at him, enabling a whole host of extra damage to be dealt to him. And so now I'm just weaving in a bunch of combos, just using Soul Cores rather comfortably. All right, let's see if I can do anything cool. 
Oh look, I'm able to get away with the full fleeting edge with some nice positioning, which is great. I decide to use Nupepo because I'm trying to just do a bit of damage so I can get onto Raiko who will require a lot more focus. But one thing you gotta make sure you do is be very mindful of your key consumption whenever you're using Nupepo. You get hit, you can run out of key very quickly, and you can lose out on all the potential that Nupepo has to offer. Alright, let's see if I can get him out of key. I don't think I will be able to, so I might as well use Severing Spin. If I had more anima, then perhaps I would have gone for it. Alright, let's see what I can do. Is he gonna shoot swords? Oh, sword key! Darn it, I missed. Alright, he's shooting swords. Alright, you got to mirror that. And let's uh, just finish him off with a quick draw, even if it's delayed, no big deal. Awesome. Great. So he's done, and the rest of this fight is going to be based on Raiko, and you're going to see how I'm able to handle her. So arguably the most frustrating form is Living Weapon, but there's also the normal Red Sword form which can really throw you off. I actually find her to be the simplest when she's using Soaya. Anyway, there was a great example of using Tengu to do two things at once, avoid the attack, don't get grabbed and get a final blow. So I use Tengu again for similar purposes. I'm not able to knock her down, but I'm at least able to send her reeling back. All right, not enough anima. Let's keep things going. Let's try to deplete her key as quickly as I can. Maybe inflict confusion as well. Ooh, dodge that very, I guess that was pretty close. All right, she's now using her soul core stuff so I can get away with some rather long animation attacks myself. All right, let's see what's next. Didn't, I decided not to go for a Tengu that time, so I'm just keeping my distance using my weapons. Arc of Chaos when she does Severing Spin can feel really spiffy. Ooh, very nice. I was able to counter her burst attack. Feels pretty good. Alright, Sohaya Maru form is a lot easier than you may suspect simply because you can parry it without too much trouble. Alright, let's get her out of key. I'm trying to do so. And then let's see what I decide to do. I think I was trying to do the Nui thing I was talking about in the dojo, but I accidentally did Daidra Bochi, but... And then I realized that, so I'm like, okay, let's just get her out of key again, and then I'll do the thing. Alright, so then let's swallow his wing, and then Nui, and then boom, get Confusion off, which is great. And so the fight's going to be a lot easier because she slowed down. I didn't get the Flying Bolt slow, but I'm not too worried. I could have probably transitioned into Yokai Shift, but I was just like, nah, I'm really not that interested. Alright, so getting her key off once again, I'm having overall a very simplistic time. I decide to go a little crazy and decide to use Nupepo. Maybe not the best use of it, but I'm like, you know what, I'm done with this. Oh boy, living weapon form, so hey, it's my turn to go into Yokai Shift. Living weapon versus Yokai Shift, uh, guess what? I'm gonna knock your <laughs> living weapon off. So I'm just gonna beat her to an absolute pulp. I'm using whatever combos that I can, trying to take full advantage of the damage that I have uh, at my disposal. So I use Nupepo. I know that if I transition into uh, a phantom form, it's just not gonna work out. So I'm just trying to beat her to a pulp, trying to get that chicken bone and knock her into the air. And then I wanted to get the chicken bone at the end, it doesn't matter, she's dead. So yeah, it can be very powerful if you use Yokai Shea from New Pepo, and I really wanted to showcase that. Thank you guys so much for watching, hope this was helpful, and I will of course see everybody next time. Take care.